Today I'm in the heart of Marrakesh, one of the seven neighborhoods that we will be featuring in Porto. Don't know much about Marrakesh? Discover it with us. What's up expats and travelers alike? I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. And I'm Kaylee. And at Expats Everywhere, we are dedicated to bringing you guys video content on what it's like being an expat. So you know what to expect, how much it's gonna cost living there, how to integrate with your new community, and just survive. <laughs> the Marrakesh Gardens are one of the more notable things within this district. And what's really nice is there's a metro that is connected right into the gardens. This square used to be called Largo da Aguardente, and Aguardente is actually the spirit that is used to make port wine. There used to be a renowned market here. It has gone through a lot of changes over its many years of existence, but in the late 1800s, the park's name was changed to its current name in homage of Marquez of Pombal, who was a minister during the reign of Dom José I, and who became known for his work in rebuilding Lisbon after the earthquake of 1755. In the early 1900s, this beautiful church was built around the Marrakesh Gardens. The buildings around the square are beautifully preserved and many small and large streets surround the gardens. Marrakesh is more of a quiet neighborhood compared to some of the surrounding city center districts. However, it still has a lot to offer as a place for expats to live. Plenty of the housing is under renovation and while it'll get a bit more of a residential feel, it's not far for walking to the center, like around 10 to 15 minutes or taking the metro a few stops to get closer to the river. This is ideal for life outside of the touristy areas, but still being within arm's reach of the buzz. This is a newer feature of the Marrakesh district where they want you to compost. So they have distributed these little bins around the different locations and you put your compost or your organics in the bins. You use your key card to open this and then you dump it in and wash out your own bin. While there are several mini districts within Marrakesh, and hey, locals, you guys can chime in on this too. We would say the size is about 10 to 15 minutes walking radius from the Marrakesh Gardens. Within this radius, there are a few metro stops on line D, the yellow line. Those are Marrakesh, Kambatanch, Salgueros, and even Faria Gumaraj. But this metro starts to bleed into the Lapa area and a different neighborhood. Now the great thing about this area is because it's not as touristy and is more residential, you'll find prices are a bit lower and that's for both housing and going out. Some of the housing has yet to be updated but shows great promise. This is good for buying. Others have been updated and are ready to rent. The district has a few good restaurants and cafes. We're going to highlight five eateries for you. Bugatti Cafe is an unassuming restaurant with traditional Portuguese food. What should you get there? A Francesinha, of course. There are other options, but I love a good Francesinha, and this is the place to go, especially because the prices are super reasonable. We're inside Bugatti Cafe right now, which is traditional Portuguese food at a very inexpensive price. What they are really known for is the francesinha. So of course I love francesinhas and that is exactly what I'm getting here. How about a well-known bakery in Porto? Before going to this bakery, we had been told about it from locals, Uber drivers, and many others. O Porto Confitera always has a line outside of it because of how good their pastries are. They are also Valencia approved. Let's jump into something a little higher priced. This restaurant is in a great location for families. As you can see, it's on a walking street and it's surrounded by a lot of apartment buildings. 
Leader is a white linen restaurant with traditional Portuguese food prepared in an elevated way, I guess you could say. It's right around a bunch of apartment buildings and is great for big family gatherings. Something to note is that it's on the Michelin watch list. It is one of the pricier options in the Marrakesh area, and some might say it's in more of a mini district, but we're gonna go ahead and clump it into this neighborhood anyway. Also moving a little away from Marrakesh, but close enough for us to keep it in this neighborhood is Cafe Velasquez, which has a large outdoor seating area and a beautiful view of Jardim Dr. Francisco Sa Carnera Park. It's the perfect place to grab a drink and relax. Lastly, on the topic of food, we want to mention an Indian restaurant in Porto. Porto Gandhi is medium priced, but serves up some delicious Indian. So we can see that Marrakesh has some variety when it comes to the food scene. Something to note though is this area is more family oriented so you won't get much of the bar and nightlife scene. However, because it's great for families, you will get some awesome parks. So this is great for kids, adults, and pets. Quinta do Covelo is a nice park for a walk, some exercise, to let your kids run around and even take your dog off the leash. There are little nooks and crannies for a quiet picnic. They have an area for flowers, there's a dog run, there's also a big area for kids of all ages. So there's really a lot to do in this park. Another beautiful park that is a little smaller but shaded with a great pond area is Jardim da Arca de Agua. There's a small playground area, but this is more of a park that's good for getting some fresh air or just sitting on a bench and relaxing. Since Marrakesh is north of the city, it makes it easy to catch the highway for trips outside of Porto, and then you're also not too far from Fabrica Social if you like art. All in all, Marrakesh is a great place to live if you're looking for something quiet, residential, more inexpensive, something catering to families, but not far from the buzz of the city center. All right, so out of five, how do you rate Marrakesh? I would rate it four out of five. I really like that it's quiet and it's not too far from the city center. It's also more residential and caters to families, which for our lifestyle right now, I think is really great. What do you think? Yeah, I was between a three and a four and I, I was leaning towards a three because when we first visited this neighborhood, it was during the cooler or colder months. It, it looks a little rough around the edges, but as it's warmed up, I've started to warm up to the neighborhood as well. I like that it's affordable. I, I like the cost of living around here. I also like how close it is to the city center. Uh, so it's a 10, 15 minute walk. It's really simple to get there. Click this playlist right here where we go through seven different neighborhoods within the Porto area and we break things down like housing, eateries, landmarks, and more. Now let's get moving.